Welcome everyone to the Thursday edition of the Off Base Podcast. It's the podcast that is carefully crafted to remind you to suck a fat one. If you think you're the only one, because you're not. I am your host. I'm the Rocky Mountain no-name jackass. And it is 36 degrees in the city of Aurora at 7.55 a.m. On Thursday, March 31st, 2021. 22! 2022. What the hell am I talking about? Last day of the quarter. Off. My wife's least favorite part of the podcast. Let's go. Okay. Rough running. Stepson and I have a date at the gym tonight. We're doing our push routine. Focusing on the chest, the shoulders, and the triceps. I've changed my diet slightly, ever so slightly, as well as starting to incorporate more cardio. For the past four days now, I am trying to take at least 5,000 steps in a day. And I discovered, and everybody might be a little bit different, but I've discovered that approximately 2,000 steps for me is one mile. So if I'm up at 5,000 steps, it's going to be a two-mile deal. Um, I'm just trying to prime my body for, excuse me, for the fat shredding phase of our year-long workout routine by incorporating more, starting to incorporate more cardio now like I said I'm doing doing two miles on the treadmill and it's just it's walking and it's walking on an incline and I would tell you the last two days when I was doing it I'm just experimenting with with distance with speed and with incline oh oh on the treadmill like I would do uh, you know a three mile per hour walk a three and a half mile per hour walk do uh, no incline two percent incline five percent incline and the five percent incline at three and a half miles per hour actually is making me sweat and um, according to the treadmill and these things are they're tough to tough to trust but according to the treadmill two miles at three and a half miles per hour at a 5% grade um, burns about 300 calories which is which is very interesting I find that very interesting it takes a little over a half hour to do it so if I were to walk three miles on the treadmill that would roughly burn uh, 500 cals for me but the key the key is to not take in as many calories so that you can burn them off and so what I'm what I'm starting to do then with my diet is to cut down on uh, on the intake and interestingly enough now this is Thursday Monday Tuesday Wednesday I haven't had any alcohol which is refreshing I haven't had a need to have alcohol telling you man during that pandemic it was like hey work's done let's get a drink but you know we're coming out of it no mask mandates anymore except at airports feeling pretty good about things feeling really good um speaking of that we were talking me and the kids we were driving home yesterday talking a little bit about the uh oh here comes the big yawn ah talking a little bit about the mask mandates and um i am in firm belief that if 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 the government decides to do it again whether it's federal or at the state level people are just going to be like fuck you <laughs> i don't think people are down to doing mask mandates yet again 
I mean, it's been since March of 2020 that we've been in this. And, you know, we know so much more than we did, obviously, about the virus. People have been vaccinated. They've had boosters. And the people that we're really trying to protect are the elder, elderly, the ones who are most vulnerable to it. Um, this is going to sound callous, crass, but for people who are obese by choice, in other words, it's not a genetic condition for them, I do not feel sorry for them. And I don't feel sorry for them because of uh, basically what I've been doing in the last year, you know, I've been making the choice to get myself in better shape and to eat, eat better. And everyone has that choice. And if you choose not to exercise every day or every other day, even if you choose to continue drinking soda, eating cakes and cookies, well, fuck, that's your problem. Why put it on us? Now, that was a big thing about um, when, uh, when Obamacare first hit about a decade and a half ago now, 13 years ago. People were rightfully pissed that they would be having to pay the medical expenses for people uh, who made bad choices. I understand people who don't have the money. I get that. But even if you don't have the money, if you're making bad health decisions on top of that, it's like, what the fuck, man? The citizens of America are losing their individuality. Something that um, a fellow like Peter Schiff talks about a lot. And how our country we were founded as a nation of rugged individuals. Not a nanny state. You know what I'm saying? Anyway. Switching topics. Switching topics. hell else is going on? Well, there's that whole Will Smith thing that still, people are still chatting and chatting about. I, I did my entire podcast on that yesterday and um, don't have anything really more to say about Will Smith and Chris Rock in particular, but um, it just had me thinking just how that moment is, is just indicative of the culture right now where People think that they can, they can, they can do anything, <laughs> and there's going to be no consequences to it. I mentioned it yesterday. It's like not a single fucking security guard came and escorted that man from the theater. Nobody. Yeah, that's okay. You can go ahead and slap people around. Oh yeah. Oh really? Oh really? I don't know, man. Setting a bad precedent. The slap heard round the world. You know what? Let's talk about the future here. Because the first quarter is just ending. And we've got uh, the spring months coming up. April, May, and June. I still got to finish fucking taxes. I think once I do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to feel lighter. Feel like I can do some other shit know what I mean? But in April, May, and June, my wife, she has quite, she has quite a few uh, trips that she's taking for work. TDYs, as they are called in the military, temporary duties. So it's just going to be me hanging with the kids. And I'm trying to think if there's, you know, if there's stuff that I could uh, plan for us to do. There's, there's, so I talked to my wife about it a little bit. You know, I've never learned how to swim. I can doggy paddle, and I can make my best attempt at, at doing a freestyle, but I never learned how to to breathe properly in the water. And I also never learned the other the other three uh, strokes: the backstroke, you know, breaststroke, butterfly. Um, 
you know, I've watched people do it, and I can I can attempt it in the pool. But like I said, I never was officially trained on how to how to breathe. I think the breathing is the most important part of it. The butterfly is just an awesome stroke. I fucking love the butterfly. Just the strength that you have to have in order to to perform a butterfly. And my step Joada, when we were in Florida. She was on the swim team. She actually, we, we took all the kids to swim lessons when they were young. Um, the olders, they actually completed their entire program. It was like a, I don't know, four-year program, five-year program. And they got these big-ass trophies when they were done. My son, he didn't finish because we had moved to Florida. And it was pandemic time as well. So he was like maybe his third year in out of five. So he never officially finished um, his swim instruction. But my stepdaughter, when we were in Florida, was on the swim team. And she is, since I can remember, has been a fantastic swimmer. I don't know. She's just she's gotten lazy. She doesn't want to do anything right now. I wish she would. Because her her swim skills and she's she's also fabulous on skis as well but her swim skills are strong and when I would take her to her meets in Florida you know there were girls there who had been swimming competitively much longer than, than she was that was only the first time that she had done it her uh, grade is she now eighth grade it was her seventh grade year it was the first time she'd done it and some of these girls man holy fuck it was just so impressive to watch them do the butterfly. And these girls would get out of the pool, and you'd see the V-shape on them. And they're like, they're only 12 years old. I was like, good Lord. It actually reminded me of my niece. My niece is um, highly competitive in gymnastics. I think she spends, what is it, four hours a day right now training. In the summertime, it's more, obviously. I think she spends four hours a day training. And last time I saw her, I was just, she's fucking, she's ripped. She's a gymnast, right? It's fucking ripped. It's that same thing of of people who have been involved in a particular activity over a long, long period of time with their discipline for that activity just continues to grow. And then their body reflects it. And the swimmer's body, man, it's just, that's an impressive, impressive specimen. <laughs> and I would love to start incorporating some swimming into my activity. And hopefully, in doing so, get my step daughter back into the pool. So, you know, getting back in the gym this past year, um, part of it's for, for me, and then part of it's for my stepson. Because one of the things I don't want for him is to be sitting in front of a TV screen all day playing video games when he comes home. It's like, get out, do something, man. Get active. Understand the value of of hard work. Begin to understand the value of hard work. In this case, the reward isn't monetary. The the reward is is, uh, self-confidence in how you look. And he's made some great progress. But his body isn't, I don't think, is as rewarding as it could be because he's still eating all these fucking carbs. I can't get the kid to eat protein. Uh, I try. His preferred food source is cereal, ramen, OJ, soda. Come on, man. No protein in there. So if I can get him to come along with me two, three days a week, I can get her to go maybe on the weekends uh, once we once we fully hit phase four of our workout routine and we're shredding the fat. Because it'll again it'll serve two purposes. One, it'll get me back. It'll get me in the pool actually learning something brand new, which I think will be great for my psyche and for my body. And two, it'll be great for her. I was just starting. I was just starting to think of Ben. 
think again about the, the alcohol consumption and how I just haven't had a need to, to drink at all. It's been very interesting. And I think I'm going to go without until my wife comes back next Thursday from her vacation. She's having a great time, by the way. And absence certainly makes the heart grow fonder, I'll tell you. She's a fabulous gal. But yeah, uh, I might, I, I will probably drink maybe tomorrow night, maybe Saturday night, because we're going to have steaks. And I recently, I ran out of, of truffle oil about, I don't know, maybe a month ago. And one of the things that the kids absolutely love is when we um, have steaks with truffle butter. I make my own truffle butter at home. Just take a, a stick of butter, soften it up, put in a, a tablespoon of truffle oil, tablespoon of salt, tablespoon of pepper. Well, maybe I do a teaspoon of, of salt and a teaspoon of pepper. And then also throw in some chopped rosemary and chopped top, chop thyme. And it's just absolutely phenomenal to melt on a steak. Fucking unbelievable, man. So if I'm going to do that, I'm probably going to have a, a nice glass of red to go with it. And it's going to be delicious. I got to think of a good movie for us to watch. Movie night, Friday night. It's. I, I'd like to pick a movie that the olders haven't seen. One that um, I think is phenomenally done. That influence me in a, in a in a positive way now the, the movies that I'm going <laughs> to rattle off right now I don't know if they influence me in a positive way but they're really good movie experiences like um, last year um, I introduced my stepchildren to Seven with Morgan Freeman, Brad Pitt Pulp Fiction and Who's the other one that we watched together? Oh, we watched uh, Gladiator. Me and Stepson watched Gladiator. There have been, been a couple of... Oh, Shawshank, which is my favorite. And this past uh, spring break, we finally were able to get our hands on a copy of Better Off Dead because Better Off Dead wasn't on any of the streaming services that we have. And my wife and I were very excited for them to see Better Off Dead, which has the infamous, or my favorite line, uh, gee, I'm real sorry your mom blew up, Ricky, <laughs> John Cusack crushed that delivery, oh, man, and then the guy who plays Charles DeMar, he's just, he's got so many quotable lines, this is pure snow, do you realize what the street value of this mountain is, <laughs> I could be home right now drinking this monster eggnog my brother makes with lighter fluid, Go that way really fast. If something gets in your way, turn. What a coach. That movie is fucking phenomenal. It's like it's like experiencing a dream. Just the way the, the oddities and the absurdities just come in and out of, of consciousness when you're dreaming. It's the same thing with that movie. That movie's awesome. So now the question is so. I want them, my wife and I have both wanted them to see Primal Fear with Ed Norton and uh, Richard Gere, but we can only watch that if my son is like playing Minecraft on my phone, because <laughs> I don't want him watching Primal Fear, he's only nine, that would not be good, but the olders are ready for something like that. So Primal Fear is kind of on the table, we'll see how things go. I'm trying to think if there's any other ones that are just really, really good stories. The thrillers. Oh, the, another one that my stepdaughter absolutely loved when I watched it with her was Shutter Island. Well, initially she hated it because she didn't like the ending. <laughs> she didn't want him to be schizophrenic, or not schizophrenic, just crazy. I don't know what the diagnosis was. Um, she didn't want. She didn't want him. She actually wanted him to be a U.S. marshal who was solving this case, and then. When she found out that he wasn't, she was disappointed. But then over time, she was like, oh, my God, it's so good. So she has come around 
and loves Shutter Island. And Scorsese directed Shutter Island. That's probably one of my favorite Scorsese's. All of his other ones, eh, I'm not the biggest fan of, like, uh, Taxi Driver. I'm not even a big fan of, of Goodfellas anymore. I don't think it's... At least for me, it doesn't stand the test of time. I know for my two podcast listeners, that's going to be that's going to be a bone of contention. But what are you, you going to do? You know, what are you, you going to do? I say I quote it all the time. Still quote it all the time. But I don't know. It wasn't uh, uplifting. <laughs> Morning, fellas. How you doing? Good. Thanks, sir. Have a good day. Yep. All right. I do like stories where the the protagonist wins in the, in the end. And Goodfellas is just weird because he rats out his whole fucking crew. And then you're supposed to be like, uh, okay. <laughs> Yay, I think. It's the same with Scorsese and, and The Departed. The, the Departed is a fucking phenomenal movie up until the last 10 minutes when your protagonist, who you've been rooting for, who you want to win, gets shot in the fucking head. Unbelievable. Ah, man. Nice shot of... The downtown of Denver in the foreground with the Rocky Mountains in the background. And I think that's going to close it down for today, everybody. So I didn't have anything more exciting to talk about, but uh, I appreciate it if you tuned in. I want to wish everybody a fantastic Thursday. And I'll smell you tomorrow.